I remember once I rolled a tire down into one of those canyons when I was young in the 80s. Matter of fact, I remember, can I say this? Is the statute of limitations up? <laughs> I better not say. I pulled the old Cadillac over on the side of the road and I had an old tire in the back and a 45 in the glove box and nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. All legal at the time. All legal at the time. Dallas, WBAP. Richard, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Savage. Michael, uh, concerning uh, Syria and Russia, I contacted the Russian embassy twice in the last month. I called the Russian embassy on Friday, and I said, God bless Putin. I believe Putin is a world hero for the truth he's telling about what's going on there. The New York Times published his letter, which was a magnificent letter. And then I sent a card, postcard, a red postcard to the Pentagon and to the Russian embassy saying, what do we need to stop World War III? Well, what's World War Three going to be based on? Who? U.S. versus Russia? We are. Hello, are, are you there? What, what's going on? Are your wife pulling the string? What? What? We're near World War Three, Michael. You know this. Wait, I'm sorry. We're in World War Three. We are nearing World War Three. No, no. World War Three was declared on nine eleven two thousand and one when the seventh century animals blew up the World Trade Center. That was the beginning of World War III, definitively. They had attacked the Pentagon, sorry, they had attacked the Marine barracks before that in Beirut, but everyone forgot that because it was only, you know, American heroes. Then they blew up the World Trade Center. We have been at war, World War III since 9-11, and most of the world doesn't know that, but they know it. The other side knows it. They've been playing by the same rule book since the 7th century, my friend. I agree. All right, well, many of us see it for what it is. And if it wasn't for Russia right now, people would be in a lot worse shape than they are because they're on the run. According to what I read out of the, the, the British newspapers, and they, by the way, it's a liberal newspaper. It's not even a conservative paper, .telegraph.uk. They claim that ISIS targets have been destroyed, decimated, and they're running. They're running like scared rabbits now that they're no longer raping eight-year-old girls or, or breaking into a church and burning it to the ground. Man, oh man, what a world, and we have a president who faked it all along. You talk about a war crime. How about faking running a war against the worst terrorist scourge since Hitler? Is that not a crime? Excuse me, is that not a crime? I want to ask you. I'm talking to you out there, you good liberals. What if you had a president who was faking a war against the worst scourge that the world has seen since Hitler? raping, murdering, pillaging, blowing up archaeological sites, and your president lied to you for over two years saying he's taking them on and fighting them. Is that not a war crime? Tell me what is. Tell me where the repercussions are. Why is it that they can get away with anything? Tell me why. Why are they above the law? Answer is they write the laws. They appoint the Justice Department. They, they, they steamroll Congress. They own the press. They have idiots like Jake Woodpecker in there. Here, yeah, I'm reading the thing. Express.co.uk. ISIS so weakened by Russian airstrikes and desertion, it could be destroyed in hours. How seven years of Obama brought the world from Kumbaya to chaos. That's from the New York Post. It's, it's unbelievable, but he gets away with it. Gets away with it. Pulls out the vowels, that's all. Gets away with it. Pulls the Harvard vowels out. Then pulls out his own thing. So let me see what's on my website. I didn't... Okay, top right. Savage's digital streaming success reaches new heights. Number two, Obama sells out U.S. workers in massive trade pack with Asia. Huge story. Huge story. And I'm so right on my headline because the AFL-CIO came out against the trade deal. Bernie the commie Sanders came out against it. I came out against it because there's no such thing as free trade. It's a lie. It's one of the greatest lies of our time. Bill Clinton pulled it on us with the NAFTA job. Remember that NAFTA and GATT? It was a complete lie. Gut of the American industry. So now what? The, the remnants of it, they want to sell out now to the Pacific Rim nations? What, Japan needs needs a little more help? What's it still work? After World War II, we just bombed them with a nuclear bomb? What kind of nonsense is this? Okay, those are the top two stories. So here's what I'm doing. I put a new byline up on my ad for my book. You know, my book ad is on the left side of my website. So it's me with that great hat saying government zero holding a picture of the nation. No borders, no language, no culture, government zero. But I'm changing the headline each week 
to get you to look at it. It's a zero strategy against ISIS exposed, pages 49 to 77. I think that this is a, a whole new trick for me. And I, I want you to look at it because so many of these things have come true. Here's one that you won't see anywhere else. A friend of mine in the military sent it. U.S. versus Russia. What a war would look like between the world's most fearsome militaries. It's a terrible scenario, by the way. It comes out of the military times. It says Russia has big ambitions, growing capabilities. And it shows the pluses and the minuses. We have a stronger military. Certainly we have a huge navy and they don't. But they have a huge submarine force. And the difference is they have a commander-in-chief who's not afraid to use it. We have a commander in grief who's nothing but a, well, I'll just say a, a shadow, a shadow player. President Obama is like a, you know the Japanese theater? You know what no theater is? Raise your hand if you know what a no theater is. Anyone out there in the audience? I'm imagining a real live audience now. I used to like live audiences. You'd ask a question, someone would raise their hand. Like in the back, with my esoteric references, like three people, oh yeah, no theater, raise the hand. Do you know what a no theater is? With the white face and they would, uh, act out ritualistic plays. Obama is sort of like a no theater actor. But in this sense, I mean it literally, not figuratively. And I'll let that hang in the air. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Syracuse, American 550, out of 15,000 for 5,000. Medical emergency. Captain is incapacitated. Uh, request uh, handling for runway 10 landing. American 550, Syracuse approach. Roger, altimeter is 3025. Uh, runway 28 is also available if you'd like. The winds are currently 090 at tree. We'll uh, accept runway 28 for American 550. Yeah, horrible. This has happened this morning. A pilot got a heart attack and died. On a, it's everyone's worst nightmare. Thank God the co-pilot took it. That was going from Phoenix to Boston. Pilot, uh, you know, died. Co-pilot took over the emergency landing in uh, Syracuse. Imagine having an overnight in Syracuse. They buy you like, don't worry, everyone's been giving a free room in the Holiday Inn with like cinder block walls next to a railroad <laughs> I've stayed in those when I was young, like when I had to work jobs in the South. Horrible places. Like the mini bar has like one rusty can of butt in it. And like a church key that's got like tomaine. <laughs> People have used it to open things you don't even want to know about. And it's like there in the drawer somewhere. Horrible places. You ask for like a cappuccino, they call a fire department to put you out. No, nah, it's not a joke, but I'm trying to lighten it up. Look what people write on Twitter. Look what a look what a passenger wrote. The pilot died on a red eye back to Boston, uh, leading to four hours in Syracuse. Life is short. Do what you love before it's too late. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I always wanted to be an airline pilot and have a heart attack with two hundred people aboard. That was my on my bucket list. Couldn't wait. What do you mean life is short? Do what you love to do. I don't understand thinking like that. I must be from another another planet or something. What does that mean? Life is short. Do what you love. That has no logic to it before it's too late. You mean when you're dying, you remember you did things you liked? Is that what that means, Robert? Does that make sense? I'm dying, but I'm happy because I, I did X, Y, and Z. I was on a water polo. T I don't understand that. Do what you love before it's too late. How does that work? I never understood that. You mean when you're sick and you're dying, you remember that you did something you like to do? What a fantasy world this country lives in. What other nation on earth had people that are, that are this shallow? I never saw do what you love before it's too late. I can't even understand that. Logically, it makes no sense. Because it would mean you'd have to remember as you're dying that you did something you love doing. So that assumes a few things. A, you're going to die like peacefully and slowly without any pain. And you're going to be totally conscious. That's kind of rare. You, maybe you're watching too many movies or something. That's not how it works. Generally, you die a slow, horrible, painful death uh, with nobody around you in agony. Or, and I'm sorry to bum you out, the truth is, where does this come from? Do what you love before it's too late. I don't know. That's the way people think. Take me out to the ball game. What do I know? How to influence friends and uh, win, win people over or something like that. 
Anyway, you know he died. It's not a funny thing, but makes you think about it. Could happen. You could hear a clunk on my desk, one of these. What if you heard this? And I got to tell you that... Oh, oh! What would they do? Robert, what would you do if you heard a clunk? You'd have to, you'd have to go to music, or do you have a tape ready? You know, we should get a tape ready just in case, God forbid. You don't want to go to music. We should get a tape ready. I got to figure out what to play in case something happens to me on the air. Maybe we should take, like... Uh, callers on that one what tape should we play in case something happens to me the last minutes of the seven <laughs> i am in a dark place right now ladies and gentlemen a place that i am in that is not really painful in any way and tis a far far better place that i go than i've ever been but i'll tell you this yesterday at three o'clock i woke up from a nap and i wrote this if floors had locks i'd seal mine shut to keep from falling into hell that's why I said when the day began, it was a dark day, and I tweeted that out. Well, tomorrow's another day. Let's hope it's better than today.